Hello and welcome to Live Questions. I'm Bill Harris, your host. Thank you for joining us today because we have an insightful discussion about life we want to share with you. Many of you have written in your questions about life seeking scriptural insights on a wide range of matters. And we have asked a panel of local ministers to research them and come up with some biblical solutions. And they're here in our studios with us, with us right now to give the answers to your questions. I'd like you to meet them. First, we have Pastor Kelly Waltz of Spencerville Trinity United Methodist Church followed by Pastor Neil Whitney of the Church at Allentown, and rounding off our panel is Pastor Rick Shear of the Living Hope Assemblies of God in St. Mary's. Ladies and gentlemen, we're happy to have you all with us today. Good Glad to be here. Yeah. Let's dive right in. One of the questions from our viewers asks this, please explain to me tithing. I struggle to give 10%, but then I get scared that God will punish me if I don't do so. So where does this person begin here? What about the tithing? What about the 10%? Giving is a condition of the heart. Mm -hmm. The New Testament says that God wants us to give generously from our heart. 10% is a good place to start, but if you can't start there, then wherever you can start is a good place to start. Okay. And I think, yeah, I agree that you give as you are able, but we also need to keep in mind because people automatically think money, 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 but everything we have is a blessing from God. Each day that we have, we have time. We do have treasure, our money, but we also have our talents as well. So there's lots of different ways that we can give back to God because everything we have, everything we've been blessed with is from Him. So lots of different ways that we can give back to him than just with money. Mm -hmm. I had somebody a couple months ago, they are a caseworker for somebody legally blind. He just got an apartment, he needed a couch and some other furniture. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a couch in a room that is, just became a catch-all, so I didn't really need that couch. So mm -hmm. I said, well, I've got a couch, if you can come and get it, and that is, you know, God blessed me with everything. That's me giving back to somebody sure. in need, mm -hmm. which is what the New Testament church was all about. Yes. If there's a need, you meet the need. If you have something, you can give. Mm -hmm. And so that is part of tithing to me is, is meeting the needs and doing it in such a way that you're drawing attention to God and glorifying Him with what He's blessed you mm -hmm. with. Okay. Right, and, and going back to the Old Testament, tithe wasn't necessarily dollars and cents. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, we, you know, uh, Abraham gave the spoils, 10% of the spoils, and that wasn't necessarily dollars and cents. It may have been some silver and gold and things like that, but I'm sure it was cattle. I'm sure it was other things. Um, we, we've got to be careful. I agree with you 100%. It's a heart issue. And so we've got to be careful that we're not just staying where we're at. If we can't give 10%, start where you can start, do what you can do now, and then begin working things so you can be more generous, mm -hmm. uh, doing what you can do with your finances so you can reach that 10% tithing and then offering. The thing that most people don't understand is scripture talks about 10%, and that's 10% of what we have that God has provided us. However, for the church, for the storehouse, that's 100% of what happens, you know, and if we are neglecting God's commands, God's uh, challenges for us, then we are neglecting allowing the storehouse to be able to function as a New Testament church, to be able to do the things that the church has been asked to do by God. Would you say then, based on what you just said, and that's, that's very sound, that tithing is a part of God's economic program mm -hmm. for the church? Like you said, and if, if people don't give, the storehouse isn't going to have to, to minister in the community. Right, right. right. I, I, you know, I don't sell advertisement on the back of my suit coat on Sunday morning to raise money for the church. It comes from the people of God. Sure. And uh, that is the, how God has set it up. That is God's desire for the church. And that's how the church functions um, based on that because there is no alternative. Now, God provides. God provides every day. God provided uh, at our church just last week with a refund from the, from the tax department, believe it or not. 
you Excellent. know, God provides, you know, he makes the, the difference. However, this is the, the functioning. And, and I think it's also a part of how we grow spiritually. Mm. You know, we're to grow in every area, not just uh, the areas we desire to grow in. And okay. it's a hard one. <laughs> is it, Pastor Walt, uh, part of God's economic program, tithing? I would say that it is, but I think, you know, you just can't define it down to that because when we refer to the church, we have to remember the church is not the building. The church is the people. Yes. And yes. Christ is the head of the mm -hmm. body of Christ. He's the head. And the fact that when it comes to taking care of, the, the building could go away, but the body of Christ right. is still. And so then, it, in my opinion, that you can still have church, you can still gather together as a fellowship, you don't necessarily need that building. So if that building would go away, yeah. God's people still needs to be able to come together, gather together, because then your, your, your gifts of using your gifts to impact the lives of others or God to impact the lives, that's gonna be a greater treasure to be built here as part of God's kingdom mm -hmm. than making sure the upkeep on a building. You definitely want a location, but if sure. that would go away, yeah. because back in the New Testament times when the church started, they didn't have a church building that they right. went to. Yeah. Well, um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to get at is something that you just said too about it's not the building, but it's ministering to everybody. Right. And it, but it takes money to do that. That's, and that's what I'm saying when I say, right. is it uh, a part of God, yes. God's economic program? In and that's more than just the pastor's yeah. salary. And the building is just a portion of that, yeah, of that yeah. economic. And I, th that, I think that's what people need to understand, that that building is just a small yep. piece of, and that there is a much bigger... Um, Although, although if you would go to preach on a Sunday morning and didn't have the lights and didn't have the heat in the middle of winter, that, you would be hearing people complain. That's, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> that, that, that's exactly where I'm coming from. And, and, these, and the people who would play, complain the most are probably the people who are giving the least. Exactly. And, and, and can afford to give more now. Can mm -hmm. afford to give more, but giving the least. Right. Um, but Jesus talks about the lady that gave two pennies. Yeah. You Look know, how he praised uh, her. Yes. And it, it's, not the, it's not the amount. It's, not, it's the heart condition. Yeah. And, yeah. But it is the ministry of the church, not building is just a small part of it. our salaries mm -hmm. as pastors are a small part of it. Well, do it, we, can, it's, okay. it's reaching the people of the community. OK, let me ask you this. Do you think it bypasses some people when the Lord talks about when we give, he will give back to us that a part another part of his economy is that, yeah, if you give, he promises to give back to you. You that can't outgive God. Right. That's my point exactly. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a matter. In other words, I think what I've seen is the world's econ economic program is based on buying and selling. Mm -hmm. And God's not against that. But God's economy is based on sowing and reaping. And when you and we sow in a lot of ways. You said that yep. mm -hmm. we sow in a lot of ways when we sow with money. And does he not? sometimes replenish that with money. Sometimes it replenishes by saving one of your unsaved loved ones. Right. You've given yeah. in an offering and then maybe he blesses you in another way. But as well, he multiplies our money too, doesn't he? Because he multiplies everything else. <laughs> That's true. People ask me, how much do I have to give? And, oh. and I always say, if you're a Christ follower, it's not a have to thing, it's a want to thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. It goes from have to to want to. It yeah. becomes a desire of your heart. Yes, it is. Uh, so, and we have to remember we have time, we have treasure, and we have talent. Those are the three T's, mm -hmm. I say. And those are ways to give. Give of our time, give of our treasure, give of our talent. And God will give a 30, 60, 100 fold return. There's no question about that. Yeah. You can't deny In that. In all areas. Yeah. In all areas. In all areas. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But, but you don't. Your motive isn't to receive. Exactly. Please say that. Your Please motive is that. to give. Yes. 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 God already owns all the cattle and all the hills. <laughs> and he owns the potatoes in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, let's get off of money because it probably makes some people out there uncomfortable anyway. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about something else. Here's another viewer question. I am a Christian. My neighbor is not and has even voiced hatred toward God. I feel so drawn to pray for him and for his heart to change. Can you give me ideas 
of how I can be a witness without actually talking about Jesus, I don't think that I will get anywhere with him if I try to talk with him about Jesus right now. Well, how, how would you approach that situation? Continue to pray. Continue to lift up. Ask God specifically um, in ways that you can minister to this neighbor. I think, like you said a moment ago, about the couch, giving of the couch or giving, mm -hmm. you know, can this person minister to their physical needs? Um, I, I would also challenge the question itself is flawed in, in as much as that the, um, I believe that probably, first of all, the hatred is probably a very strong word as yeah, far as what... Yeah. what um, but it could but, be possible but, that they do hate God. You, you don't know what they've I, been I, through. I, I would yeah. challenge that it's probably more of a hatred towards the church. Why would you than, make that distinction? Because the church is what's flawed. God isn't flawed. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that so? Um, I think that most people will be glad to talk to you about Jesus. But when you start talking about the church, you see the, you see the change there. Yeah. The, the, I've, I've observed that there are people who don't want to join church because of the people. Mm -hmm. And I say, well, you know, there, there are no perfect churches. And if you happen to find one, the minute you walk <laughs> in, it'll change. That's right. You know? That's right. Um, so... How do you get across to people that wherever they go, the church is just not perfect, but it's, it's, it's for, we're forgiven. Mm -hmm. At least we're forgiven, but we're not perfect. How do we get that across? Well, the most important thing would be to take Jesus to the person, even though you don't say Jesus's name. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to be the church yeah. wherever we are. So my solution to this would be what Jesus did. He would just go spend time with that person. Yep. Yeah. He would just invest time into that person and you don't have to talk about Jesus. You can display Jesus. You can, you can be Jesus without ever saying. I disciple a lot of people and a lot of times when I start first three, four times, never talk about, never say the word Jesus once. People yeah. need hope. And if you love somebody and care for them, that's the formula for hope. Yeah. Okay. So just go and, and give them hope. Love them and care for them. Let's pause there for a break. And I do want to pick up on this because that's very good stuff. You're saying we want to continue that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Don't go away. There's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastures you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now, back to the discussion. All right, well, thank you for being with us. And we're back with that same question that we had hanging in the air as we took a break. And that is the person who wrote in saying that they have a neighbor that is not saved. In fact, they, they have expressed their hatred toward God but this Christian who wrote the letter said they want to be able to witness to them. What, what do you think, what else can be done? Um, I was taught, make a friend, be a friend, lead a friend to Christ. It's a mm, process, mm -hmm, so. Mm -hmm. And lead a friend to Christ, is, that's, that's later. It's just be a friend. Yeah. So you build a relationship with right. somebody. You, you get to know them, they get to know you. And what happens is the level of trust goes up and then God will open up a door and provide you with an opportunity. Mm -hmm. yep. And you may have to be patient. You may have to wait, but you keep demonstrating Jesus through your, the words that you share, the actions of, of just loving the other person. Excellent. We've got to learn to do life with people. Um, I think we're bad at doing it with brothers and sisters in Christ, let alone trying to do it with those of the world. Um, and we've just got to learn to do life with people. It's okay to spend time with people that don't yet know Christ. Um, and so doing life, playing basketball, doing sports, doing whatever, uh, you know, it, it's okay. Because that's how you demonstrate Christ, which then leads to being able to talk about Christ. And I think that's part of it. You, some people already have a notion of how a Christian yeah acts, speaks, and may have a wrong impression and make a, a stereotypical statement, well, all Christians are bad because of a bad experience. Mm -hmm. So what they need to know is 
that we're just all alike, each one of us. We have our sins just as everybody else. We have Jesus as our Savior Lord. That's the big difference, but we're still the same in so many mm -hmm. respects. Mm -hmm. And um, that they need to know by spending time with us that we're just regular people. Pastor Booth, you, you have a hobby that you use mm -hmm. to help you in terms of witnessing, is, is that right? Yeah, I play ice hockey for a hobby, <laughs> and I use that as a, a ministry tool to talk to people. And how, do, how do you do that? How does that work? Just be there and listen and care. That's it, that's just be there, listen and care. And that's it, that's what Jesus would do. Yeah. Uh, it's not complicated to do that. Anybody can do that. And I think viewers can be able to take what you just said there, transfer that into something that fits their own lifestyle, mm -hmm. and do that the same way you're doing with ice hockey. That's right. Everybody yeah. has that window of opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, some people seem to think that you have to be in a hurry to share and <laughs> almost cram it down people's throats and that's just gonna yeah. turn people off. Yep. Yep. Uh, you gotta let go of the control and just be who you are and be a friend and let God be in control of how things play out and happen. We like formulas. <laughs> As people, we like formulas, especially if, you're, if you love math in any way at all. We like formulas and we wanna A to B to C and yet God's economy in, in discipleship isn't that way. It's time. The Bible's very clear you can't have control and growth at the same time. Nope. <laughs> you have to sacrifice control if you want to have growth. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent advice. Let's go to another viewer question here. Um, this is, I know, a, a favorite one for you because you've, you've got the experience in, in addition to the research on it. My child wants to do a travel sports league that meets on some Sundays. Is it okay for us to participate in this league? It wouldn't be every Sunday, just about four to six weeks. It seems that anymore, the only way to achieve real success in high school or college is to participate in travel, uh, travel leagues. Mm -hmm. So there, there's, there's, I guess, on the part of the parent here, possibility of some guilt right. about you know, participating in that with their child on a Sunday. What, what do you think, Pastor? Well, I think, I think sports is a big issue in, in our society. First of all, I want to say I love sports. I love baseball. If you come into my office, you would see sports memorabilia. Uh, I, I got that from my grandfather and from my uncle. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I love sports. Sports are important to children and to society. Um, we learn discipline. We learn uh, obedience. We learn skills that we can't learn any other way. Sports are so important uh, to children and, of course, to society. You know, it's an opportunity. Sports become an opportunity for the discipleship we just talked about, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. a, a coming together. Um, but then we need to think about this, about the word success in high school and college and, and sports. You know, I define success as reaching the professionals, reaching a college degree or, or something like that, a, a scholarship and things like that. However... Most sports combined, all sports combined, if you get some, some specific sports, it gets a lot less. Um, but going from a high school sports athlete to a college sports athlete is about 7%. Mm. Then when you factor in the NCAA Division I sports, it's about 2%. And then when you figure from high school to the professional level, it's less than 2% that reach a professional level of sports. And when we think about that number, I don't care if that number was 50%. In the end, 100% of the people that die are going to face God. Those numbers just don't add up. Now, sports, love them. Sports, necessary. But they can't become our substitute God in our life. The guilt that this parent is obviously feeling, I think, tells a story that there is uh, an understanding that God is first. And I think that's important here. I think too many times we allow sports to become our God. And that's where we flip and miss the mark mm -hmm. as far as the importance. What does that mean when you reach a point where sports become your God? 
define that for you? Well, they're, they're, they're not worried about the four to six weeks. Then it becomes another four to six weeks, and they, they're, not, they're not concerned about whether they're at church. It's okay that we miss church because all day Saturday we were sitting out in the rain um, uh, for a sports event. You know, it, it becomes a substitute for what we're doing, and it becomes a generational thing. You know, when we are choosing sports over God, what are we really telling our kids? Giving them a different priority, aren't you? And, yeah. and what's going to happen in, when we give them that priority? They're going to be lost and they're going to be seeking the hope of God in sports. Mm -hmm. Then what happens when the sports aren't there? What do they have to cling on to where we have God for, for our entire life and eternity? You want to add to that, Pastor Wallace? Um, I just think that with sports, that everybody needs to, I mean, there's a reason why we have sports. Mm -hmm. It's part of God's plan. And sure. look at across the board, how are sports good for anybody that participates mm -hmm. to help them in their growth? That, because you exhibit some of the same characteristics in sports that you want to be able to see in a Christian. And so it's an opportunity, you know, how to deal with conflict when you get upset or angry out there on the field. And so there are things that we can learn that are going to help us in our growth, just how to conduct ourselves in society. But there are also those characteristics that are important as a Christian that's going to help us grow. And so I think sports are important in that way. And, you know, if they miss a few Sundays, are they still, because what is church is coming together to spend time digging into God's word, spending time in Christian fellowship, spending time in prayer. Yes. And so if there is a, a where they, you know, miss a few Sundays, but they set aside time as a family to come together to worship God, then they're still doing it. But don't let that become a practice all the time. And then eventually that practice disappears. Mm -hmm. Because there's, you know, when you come together to spend time in God's word, time in prayer, you know, that's what we do at church. Yeah. Pastor Whitney? I'm a heart person. <laughs> where your tra Jesus said, where your treasure is, yeah. there your heart will mm -hmm. be also. Mm -hmm. Had a situation a few weeks ago where we had a couple that, and the two kids that were going to a soccer tournament mm -hmm. and they were watching our church online on the way driving to watch to do the hockey tournament. So in this culture that we live in now, it's, it's so crazy. <laughs> you can miss church and still watch church. Mm -hmm. it, we, we believe family first, God ordained family. And for me, if a family is going to a soccer tournament, they're together, that's awesome. That's the way God wants it to be. And we can't become judgmental about things like that. God knows people's hearts. And, and we can see people's hearts because we have the heart of Christ within us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says the spirit will bear witness to another person's yes. spirit. Yes. So compassion is a big deal. Don't, don't get legalistic. Don't get narrow-minded. And uh, if you're in touch with people, you know their hearts. You know their hearts. You know if they're getting off track. So pastor has to be in touch with the people in the church. They're the shepherd. They're supposed to be watching, paying attention. Yeah. When it comes to success, I used to think success was real important. Then I found out significance was more important. Mm -hmm. And then I found out sacrifice was the most important thing. And, and if you are willing to make the sacrifice, you will be significant and you will be successful, whatever successful means in that area of mm -hmm. your life. Good. We'll end it in, the, in that part of the conversation with what you just said. Uh, here's another question from viewers. Um, I've heard Christian speakers talk about the men being the head of the household. My husband shows no interest in this, even though he is a Christian. He waits for me to make the decision and won't offer his advice when I ask for direction. I am feeling weary. I would like to see my husband be the leader I believe God created him to be. No question with that, but that's quite a statement. Um, this woman would like to get some advice. Well, the first thing they should do is get a personality profile. 
and they should find out what the other person's mm -hmm. personality mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's not a strong personality trait for her husband yeah. and that he needs to grow in that. Mm -hmm. There, People have gaps between them in their personality. So that's not always a spiritual thing. It could just be a personality thing. And personality change and growth is also spiritual. Yeah. That's how it happens. And perhaps that Pat, uh, that member, or that, that that husband, may not have ever heard a sermon uh, talking about the husband mm -hmm. in his role. Yeah. That, that could be the case. Yeah, too. people yeah. perish for lack of knowledge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like what you talked about about the personality concepts. I, I'm very big on that myself uh, with the DISC programs. You want to comment on that as as a female uh, pastor? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been taught that uh, sometimes also you need to take a look at their past. There, right. there may be a sure. root cause. Sure. You know, the environment that he grew up mm -hmm. in may have had a strong female oh, yes. running the household. Oh, yes. So then that's just part of who he is. It's the female that runs the household. So you have to look back into the past, how they were raised, how were they influenced, because that can play a whole big part into how they live their life today yeah. as well. Thank so. you. I think we can't focus on male and female roles. I think, I, I, as you said about the family being ordained by God, you know, the man and the wife is ordained by God Amen. and to work together. And I think that is important. I think scripture is, is important uh, as far as talking about the man being the head of the household. However, if he doesn't, then, then somebody has to step up. Uh, but I think that they need to be working together, studying God's word together. I Amen. think not to be focused on male and female roles, uh, but working and trying to grow closer to God together. And then I think some things will happen naturally uh, in, in that uh, role because that's how God works. Would you suggest a Bible class that is centered on male-female relationships in marriage? I would absolutely would that, uh, mm -hmm. do that. I would. I would. I would also encourage them to make sure that they're doing a uh, couple devotion together, right. yeah. uh, doing, doing something together and maybe not necessarily focused on male and female, but just growing in God together and seeing what God will do in the midst of the situation. Okay, well, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much for your input. We appreciate you uh, very much for your input. And that's our program for today. We will be back, of course, uh, next week at the same time. So stay tuned. Bye bye for now. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com.